All right, so uh, welcome everyone uh, to our first policy scrum. Uh, don't ask me to define it, just know that it's an excuse for us all to come together uh, and coordinate around specifically the World Health Assembly. Um, we want to uh, have a discussion today on uh, the priorities at WHA and how we can all come together on those and any position statements or, or lobbying of member states. And then we also want to um, talk specifically about events and get a sense of what folks are planning and see how we can um, coordinate there. Um, we will not do intros just because we also have folks um, online, um, but for folks online we have people in the room uh, and uh, I think maybe we can always circulate in attendance list or something if folks are interested in hearing who's here, um, but I think that'll come out a bit in discussions as well. So let's just get started since we got um, going a little bit later. First of all, I'm Lois, I will introduce myself I suppose, uh, with the Global Health Council. Uh, uh, but essentially, uh, the agenda for today is around, uh, first of all, looking at the priorities, as I mentioned, and specifically we'll talk about the provisional agenda that WHO has put out for uh, WHA. I also want to provide space to offer intel on what the U.S. might be focused on, um, as well as any resolutions that might be coming up, because I know that can take up space at WHA as well. And then, like I said, we'll um, use the latter half of the meeting to talk about events and how we can collaborate on those. Um, just so people know as well, this is the first in a series of scrums, uh, and so we plan on having a couple more. Um, the next one will likely be on a topic that we might identify today that's important to people, uh, and then the last one will maybe be more logistics um, around the event itself, and specifically with people who are joining us as delegates or advocates in Geneva. This slide is just a bit on GHC. For people who might not know, but essentially we're a membership organization. Uh, we host a fairly large, one of the largest dele delegations at World Health Assembly. Uh, it's a benefit that we provide to our members, but then we also welcome partners to join our events and otherwise collaborate with us um, in Geneva in May. Uh, it's an exciting time for everyone, I think, as we look at sort of global health priorities moving forward and specifically new leadership at WHO. So I think we're going to see a greater interest at, at WHA this year. Um, but of course, GHG is really happy to, to lead the charge um, and really open to feedback on how we can best support um, you all in your engagement at the World Health Assembly. Uh, for this meeting, and this is for folks who are online um, using our webinar platform, um, we, because we have such a strong response to joining online, we won't be opening up the lines, but we are attempting to make this um, interactive, and so you'll see some polls and other opportunities to weigh in throughout the discussion. Um, we also still have um, retained the chat box feature, so if people have questions or comments, just remember to include your full name and organization, and then include it in the chat box, and we have someone on this end who will go ahead and put that up on the screen so that we can um, see that and respond to it accordingly. So let's get into it. Uh, background on WHA, uh, WHA, for people who don't know, um, really, or for people who don't know WHA, the purpose is to really determine the policies of WHO um, and really talk through both kind of programmatic matters and also kind of business or governance, so financial and other matters of, of the organization. The agenda for WHA is essentially set at the executive board meeting at which we also um, host a delegation. Am I saying all this right, Matt? You're good. <laughs> Our multilateral expert in the room. Um, but, but yeah, this, this is an opportunity for the member states to come together and really hash it out when it comes to the agenda that has been set in January. And so again, we are able to attend WHA as civil society and weigh in accordingly. We sit in the galleys, we're not voting obviously, um, but we still um, yeah, ideally play some role uh, in terms of uh, member state positions and, and votes and the like. So that's, that's essentially background on WHA and what it is. There's more background on WHA if you go to WHO's site, and we've included a link to um, the page for this year's assembly uh, on the slide. So our first question, um, show of hands in the room and um, poll online, who is going to be attending WHA this year? Okay. And of those who didn't raise your hands here, is it, are your organizations attending in some capacity? No, yes, okay. So we have about mm, half the room here who says it's attending, and Liz is still tabulating results for folks online. Um, yeah, so it looks like about, well, it's changing, <laughs> but about 50% are going. There are about 25% that are not, and then there's another quarter that are um, on the fence. Okay. All right. Great. That's good. Good to know. Um, I think this next 
set aside just talks again about what our goals are with the policy scrums. I've also I've already gone over that, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself as usual, so we'll go ahead and skip over these in the interest of time and just dive right into um, the agenda. So of people who are going or tracking WHA, we wanted to get a sense of what topics you'll be following. Um, the reason why we highlighted these topics in particular is because um, this uh, seemed to jump out at us when we looked at the provisional agenda as to what would be highlighted at this year's assembly. It also coincides with what um, we highlighted or, or what we featured in terms of our webinar leading into the EB, recognizing that these were the main topics there too. So just to read them out, um, their NCDs is going to be an, um, a topic of discussion, especially with the upcoming high-level meeting in 2018. There are a few items on R&D, and that's just broadly speaking, as well as emergencies or preparedness. Um, obviously, the DG election is going to be a big um, a BFD and uh, uh, the global, <laughs> there's sort of a, a grouping of global strategies, we say. So um, the global action plan on vaccines, there's the um, global strategy on maternal child and adolescent health, I believe that's an agenda item, the SDGs is an agenda item, and so that's what we mean by sort of global strategies or, or plans. So um, uh, our folks in the room, I think if people on, online can respond to the poll, that'd be great. And I don't know if you're already getting responses to that, Liz, if you want to share that with the folks in the room. Uh, I am, yeah. Do we want to just go by topic? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's go by topic. So what's like the highest ranking topic that people are seem to be tracking? So, so far it looks like about 75 of participants online are interested in the global strategy, like the global vaccine action plan. Um, and then the other four topics, um, about 50% online are interested in the other four topics. Okay, how about for folks in the room? Are you guys tracking the same? Or yeah. um, And uh, for MSH, we're doing a lot on NCDs, the global strategy on maternal and newborn child health, and the global vaccine kind of peripherally. Of course, we're really interested in the election and kind of the first hundred days, first couple uh, year for the new DG. Okay, right. great. Others? Um, I think for us, the global strategy, um, both in central and adolescent health, um, NCDs, including also the obesity, um, GVAP, health of migrants, mm -hmm. um, the global shortage of medicines and vaccines, yes. as well as um, polio and down to microbes. Okay. okay. Um, mostly NCDs, but of course, we're all interested in the vaccine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yep, I can speak from past, and we're, we're tracking all of them to some extent. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And pass a bit more broadly than R&D, wearing my other hat, mm -hmm. um, also very much polio and AMR, okay. um, given the kind of global movement around those yep. and okay. transition especially. Okay, great. Uh, and speaking for GHG, I think our, our main topics are on security or emergency preparedness and the DG election, but interested in all of the issues from a member standpoint. So it seems like we honed in on the right topic areas, <laughs> um, if nothing else. Uh, it seems, you know, I didn't get the sense that people were saying, oh no, why, why would you put that up there? So um, it's good to hear that we're, we're hitting, um, hitting the right tone here. When it comes to USG, um, I would like to say that a lot of us haven't heard all that much from USG. Um, I did hear a couple of things, um, I think aside from the DG election, which they have um, told us, you know, before that they'll never really show their hand as to whom they're endorsing, even, you know, after it's all said and done. Uh, but um, there's a sense that they are going to be really tracking this uh, nutrition dialogue um, and any sort of debate around around the, the conference of nutrition, um, as well as maybe some of the, the R&D pieces, particularly around IP and some of the language that came out of the high-level panel report on access to medicine. So that is some feedback that I heard recently from folks um, at HHS, but I didn't know if other people online or in the room had been hearing other intel from HHS. And I'll pause right now because it's a matter of yeah. questions. Just a few logistical notes for those in the room. If you could just announce who you are and what organization you're representing, um, if it applies, that would be great. Um, and then the same to those on webinar. And we actually, I just wanted to go back to our, our, our poll. Mm -hmm. um, we had a few additional people speak up. Um, I know Vince from Frontline Health Workers Coalition mentioned that he or they are following the um, five-year action plan of high-level commission on health, employment, and, and economic growth. Right. Um, we have a dot from Women in Global Health um, is interested in gender equality priorities. Um, and then I think we had a few more coming in. Um, John Klein from NCD Child mentioned 
um, issues about the Mexico City rule and U.S. withdrawal from UNFPA mm -hmm. um, and how it might impact the RMNCH agenda. Um, those were, I think, maybe as it relates to the U.S.G. No, thank you. And sorry, apologies to Rupa, Vince, and uh, John for, for jumping ahead. I should have uh, taken my time. But the fellow and I are kind of overzealous with our slide advancement. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so actually, let's pause to because uh, I feel like John's point on UNFPA. Um, I don't know if that's going to be a topic of discussion at WHA. Um, so I don't know if we if that's something that we want to talk about in this forum. But I'm I want to open that up to the floor here in the room or to others on the online to respond to that. Go ahead, Aaron. Well, I think it's an important topic in and of itself. But I also think that the broader issue is. Just the U.S. engagement with the U.S. system overall is something that, as Americans, many of us having recently been part of U.S. delegations to the U.N. or WHO and WHA, um, have to be prepared to think about. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And um, have people been having conversations with USG about that, or been able to have any conversations with USG about that? Um, yeah. So, sorry. This is Matt from, I guess, GHTC. Um, the kind of feedback we're getting is that um, cuts are a reality, um, and it's across programs, even programs that like global health security, like the international health regulations, like pr pandemic preparedness, that kind of the new administration sees as valid and a priority and, and worthwhile, even those are going to get cut. Um, and that means it's going to be some pretty dark days for the WHO budget, yeah. um, which operationally has impacts even on programs that you're trying to preserve. Yeah. Um, so that's not to be doom and gloom, but no, um, that's, that's what we've been hearing. But then the priorities are IHR preparedness, mm -hmm. global health security, um, and then some of the other items that we're so how do we reconcile that, Matt, with, and this is not just a question for you, but I know that you have a lot of contact with member state reps. Um, you know, how do we reconcile the fact that those are still priorities for the U.S., uh, presumably, with the fact that the resources are, are going to, to shift, you know, our commitments are going to change? But I want, as a community, to be prepared for those questions that we might be getting from member states. And frankly, I, I'm surprised that we haven't gotten more of them. Um, we didn't get a lot of them when we were there for the EB, as you know, and maybe people were still a bit yeah. or waiting to figure it out, but I imagine we might hear a lot more angst um, when we go in May. Yeah. Um, it's a tough one to answer. <laughs> um, I mean, I think the the answer that um, the, the administration answer mm -hmm. is that these are our priorities and we're funding them at what we believe is the U.S.'s appropriate share of these global priorities. I'm not going to take a stance on sure. how correct that is, but yeah. that's the answer that's that, you would, that you would get. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's what member states certainly are going to be hearing from the U.S. delegation. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the broader debate is, is then going to be a member state to member state debate yeah. about what is the appropriate share, mm -hmm. quote unquote, of these various organizations, and that goes straight to the DG elections yeah. and trying to rework assessed versus voluntary contributions yeah, exactly. and all of that. So I think even if it may not be formally on the agenda, this mm -hmm. is going to be the elephant in the back of the room of yeah. all of these conversations. Um, this is Eric Trachtenberg. I actually have some ideas. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Um, a couple, a couple perspectives. One is that if you actually, my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is that we're actually, in terms of our assessed contribution, we're actually, we're already consistent with where the administration, if you look at the percentage that they're willing to pay, where our, our assessed contributions are actually slightly over that. The real concern is on the discretionary side, right. and you know, that's 80% of the budget, more or less. And you know, I just want to sort of copy and paste something out of something we've been doing in another front. I'll see if it appears. You know, I've been involved with an effort to save NAFTA. You know, it's a group of 150 agriculture groups also group involved with an effort to sort of get them the administration to engage on Africa. And one of the arguments we've been making, and I don't know if this is the appropriate venue, but I'll just throw it out there, is basically saying that supporting these programs, these discretionary programs, identify what they are, highlight what their value is. These programs are good for American business, 
and good for our national security. And I think those are the arguments, you know, on the ag side and someone on the Africa side, we have been getting some traction. They haven't torn up the napkin. May end in tears. But I think if we can somehow, and as I said, I'm not sure how the appropriate venue, I'll leave this to better minds in the room, but, but if we can sort of make the argument that this buttresses national security, reduces refugee flows, it increases ec economic activity, it's good for America, then I think that's a place where it's a language they will understand. Mm -hmm. Anyway, just some thoughts. No, it's helpful, Eric and Matt. So I, um, I, I can appreciate the, the last comment, and, and I think, in, in my mind, there, there are a couple of things we need to be prepared to do as civil society um, in, in May, and perhaps it could be a topic for the next webinar even, um, is how, what our message is uh, when we walk in, because we, we do have a sense of the company line or, or what the USG right. is going to be communicating to member states. I think the question will be, well, how do we respond as a community to that, um, both member states and, right. and uh, civil society to the extent that we can be helpful there. And so I think translating some of what Eric said, um, which aligns with the advocacy that we have been doing and the messaging we've been using um, here, it's helpful. And I know, you know, Danielle uh, has been working with folks uh, who are even a part of this discussion today on kind of that community message, that community advocacy message um, for sort of what works in global health and how to preserve that funding for WHO and otherwise. I think that there is a separate um, message that we need to communicate, which we haven't really delved into as a community, which is what happens if and when there are cuts uh, to WHO um, or to other pro health, global health programs. And so, um, you know, an idea that we had is to maybe broker some of that dialogue at WHA and we will, we can share some more thinking behind that when we talk about events. But I do think we need to be prepared to answer that question for ourselves and for others. Um, do we know what the answer is today? No, I don't think so. Um, but, but I don't think we can just sort of we can only sort of shrug our shoulders so long on that, I, I think. So um, I think that's what I wanted to add as we sort of move on. But I, I appreciate this part of the discussion because I do think, like that said, this is the big, it's not on the agenda, but it's everything, mm -hmm. uh, at least from our standpoint. But, okay. uh, I just, and in the change in administration, do we have a good sense of who will be going in from the U.S. government at this point? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have the I mean, we, we go ahead, Crystal, because um, you think we have the same Crystal intel. from MSH, yeah. I, Irene, I want to call her Coke. I want to call her Clax, but it's Lily Clax. Irene Coke um, is going, and then AA is going, I think, who works under her. Yes. And then there's one other person going. Those are the three for sure. From USAID. That from USAID are going. And then HHS, we've heard Price will be there. Um, uh, and I'm presuming Mitch and, and other, other folks we know. Um, go um, ahead. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Mitch will. Uh, Peter Mamikos Peter will, will be there. there. Um, and then Gabriel. Obviously, our, our new health attache in Geneva, Tracy Carson, will also be there. Um, I'm I believe there will be a state contingent as well. Um, and I, CDC, I think. Yeah, and, and CDC as well. I, I don't have anything more than rumors on this, mm -hmm. but I would personally be very surprised if Bill Steiger not there is not there. Um, but again, I haven't heard anything but rumblings on that. Right. And then CDC is much more up in the air as far as I've been here. Well, yeah, especially in the absence of a, right. of a director. Right. I, presumably, Rebecca Martin will be there with a couple of staff, but yeah, right. um, all TBD, some TBD, I won't say all TBD. So we know some things, it's a good question, uh, and, and that's something we can try to firm up. I, I presume they will also have a listening session as they've had in the past, but we don't know yet. We probably I think they'll need an ambassador for global affairs before yeah, they can maybe. really do yeah. that. Details, details, Matt. Um, we have something on, online? Yeah, so actually some of those questions were already raised to okay. the delegation in the listening session. Okay. I also encourage folks on the webinar, if you have intel as well that you're able to share with us, um, I can share with the group and we can kind of announce it as well. Um, and then I think there was also maybe a request just to do a quick summary of the kind of informal, um, I guess, agenda items that USG is bringing. Oh, yes. Uh, so, yeah, so, yeah, I went through, I went through probably too quickly. I apologize. Um, so, uh, the DG election, we assume, is important um, to them, uh, although we, 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 what we haven't done yet, just to be clear to everyone, is that 
Um, before the EB, we had a discussion with the USG about um, how they're going to focus um, for that engagement. Um, and so we could report out to the community um, a week or so after we'd had that conversation. We haven't had that yet, and it's partly because all of the people haven't been put in place, and we're trying to give them time to build out that staff. Um, uh, and so some of this is just inside meetings. So I just wanted to provide that, um, that base of information. But uh, we think that the DG election will be important to them um, and that they will obviously have a vote and weigh in accordingly, although we have no idea what they will, will who, whom they will support. Um, we also believe that security, preparedness, emergencies will continue to be important, and so they'll be tracking those conversations just as they have to this point. Um, and then a couple of other issues that had been highlighted, at least to me, uh, were uh, the discussion of the second conference of nutrition. Uh, and, and, you know, I think just some, I think those of us who have been more involved in those conversations know that that has been a bit contentious. And so the U.S. Um, uh, has a, a stance in that debate and is tracking that closely. Um, in the same vein, um, there's been debate around the high-level panel report on access to medicines. Um, and the U.S. has been, I'm trying to use the word, choose the word, um, I guess disappointed in some of the recommendations it's made? It's like, uh, disappointed. It's straight from their talking points, actually. Okay, <laughs> I may as well be a diplomat. I mean, uh, so I hope that's helpful to people on the phone um, to review that. And then in addition to those several priority areas that we are, that we've, either, that we've either heard or are kind of assuming are priorities for them, we feel as though a big topic of discussion will be around U.S. leadership especially at the multilateral level and WHO specifically. Just one other question around USG, and I think you move on. Yeah. Um, this came from um, Lauren, I'm not sure what organization. Um, do you expect any unusual reactions from other WHA attendees towards the US delegation? You could write on there if there's any. Has there been any? Oh, OK. Is this, some, is this from Lauren, you said? Yes. OK. Hello, Lauren. Uh, so will there be, a, gosh, I don't know, <laughs> will people protest the U.S. delegation? This will be interesting. I mean, I don't, it'll be interesting to see how member states respond to us. And this is a question that I've had, you know, and whether or not, I don't know. I'm looking at Matt. I say no. Yeah, it's going to be business as usual, maybe. Yeah, I, I mean, I, even, even under the Mexico City policy years under Bush at the Global Fund, where mm -hmm. obviously it's a huge thing. People were were very respectful, mm -hmm. and it's yeah. International diplomatic protocol is is a very strong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's a maybe, maybe outside, maybe yeah. outside the Palais, there may be UAEM or mm -hmm. kind of some of the more grassroots advocacy organizations that are yeah. doing something, but. Um, the member states themselves. No, ma not the member states, and the Swiss police will keep everyone very far away. Right, yeah. They'll get invited to some of the cocktail parties. <laughs> yeah. All right, great. Well, let's move on from um, from this section. I, I think I'm going to, I'll touch on resolutions briefly because I, I want to give people a chance to share what they think might come up. Uh, I, I have been hearing about a cancer resolution um, as far back as last year, so I'm assuming that's still on the table, and that's going to be... Um, put on the table by a couple of member states, but anyone else move anything? So there is a resolution on cancer prevention right. currently on the agenda, and if it's on the agenda coming out of the executive board, it's, it's going to be discussed. Yeah. So, yeah, Thank I think you. that's that's, all, that's 100%. Right. All right, we'll move on from there. Thank you. Uh, and let's go on to events, because uh, we're about half past. Great. Uh, and so we want to pivot now and um, talk a little bit more about what you all are planning for this uh, on the ground. And I think we have a poll as our first slide. Yeah, we do have a poll. OK, so wanted to know who is planning a side event. Um, Show of hands in the room, polls on the web. <laughs> okay. Most people in the room are planning side events. We'll give it another second for folks online to see how it goes. 
a lamp. And for people who don't know um, what side events are, uh, I mean, of course you know what side events are, but what they look like at WHA, there are two types. There are those that are kind of sponsored, usually done in coordination with member states inside the Palais or on location, on site, and then there are a plethora of other events that happen off site. Uh, and so uh, we need to capture all of those as part of this discussion. Will there be a event on calendar? Uh, yes, uh, that's a great question from someone here in the room, if whether or not we'll, there will be a calendar. GHG does do a cal pull a calendar together of events. It might not be, it's pretty exhaustive, it might not be all inclusive, but we do our best. And so if people, do hear, I guess I can ask if people do hear about events to please send them to events at globalhealth.org so that we can add them to our calendar. Go ahead, Liz. Great. Um, so on the webinar, we have about 33% that are uh, planning an event, uh, about 50% that are not, and about 20% that um, might be. So they can see the poll on their end. Oh, oh great. Okay. <laughs> we are the ones who can't see it. Okay, great. <laughs> for sharing that. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a conversation about events for those who are planning some or maybe you're, you know, are still thinking about it. Um, we thought, well, let's see how this goes, but we thought it could be helpful to have um, this conversation in a couple of ways. First and foremost, really getting a sense of the topics people are trying to cover, and then secondly, trying to get a sense of the days, because just logistically, sometimes we, you know, we worry as a community about being on top of each other, and people generally try to cluster in the first few days of the week. Um, which is fine, but let's all be aware of that. Um, and same with topics. You know, if, if there are a lot of people looking at global health security, maybe we want to think about how folks can coordinate. So I know folks are um, filling out the poll right now um, online, but for folks in the room, um, I think we already, what are you laughing at? No, I'm, I'm looking at the list that I'm trying to put together of the number of, of all your events. events. Okay. So um, uh, I'm going to start with Crystal because she talked about the events that she or the topics she's tracking. Are you doing events on each of those topics, like NNCH um, and HM Yeah, a lot that? of them, actually. <laughs> and I'll say this, um, we're co-sponsoring a number of them with partners around the table and on the phone. So again, Crystal MSH. So um, nothing formally on Sunday. Monday, we have an event from 4 to 6 p.m. Um, that we're co-sponsoring on um, essentially well, top priorities for the new director general, and um, it's at the press club. This is my test. Tuesday, um, from 12 to 2, we have an event on, um, this is not the title, but an event on fragile states, and particularly um, addressing return on newborn child health. And Tuesday, 4 to 6, um, 4 to 6 is the event on yeah. global security. Yeah, so Global Security is Monday in the BQ Venice. They know better than I do. Um, so sorry about that. Global Security, yes, is the first day, um, and that's going to be uh, Raven Martin is co-sponsoring. I'm sure they're online um, that event, and um, that particularly is looking at women's perspectives on global health security. So we're really actually super excited about that event because, um, as you know, uh, over the past couple of years, there have been a number of events where women's voices were not heard, and um, we believe we add a different value to the conversation. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we got, we have this panel of women experts who are going to be talking about global health security and particularly bringing up some issues that may not always come up when the panel does not include women. So we're super excited actually about that one on Monday. Again, at the Press Club, 4 to 6. Tuesday, 12 to 2, Fragile States and Maternal and Newborn Child Health. Um, the Minister of Health from Afghanistan and Liberia are both confirmed for that event. Um, from 4 to 6 on Tuesday, there is an um, event on CG, with, um, the priorities for the next Director General. Again, another really cool event. Um, Denton's law firm hosted an event here in Washington, and it really got a lot of conversation going on how do you prioritize when this very changing world, and with the U.S. changing their role um, in some sorts of in some ways about around leadership. So really like laying out, like similar to what we do for president, like what do we want to see as success? Um, because there will be so many voices. And then that evening, um, starting at six, MSH invites you to a reception to welcome our new um, president and CEO, Marion Whitworth, um, at the press club. So we're just staying there all day. 
camping out. Um, and it'll be, you know, cocktail appetizers. People can come in and come out. But we really wanted um, her to meet the global health community. She comes from Merck. So um, has been involved with, you know, global health from a different perspective from a pharmaceutical side. Um, we, you know, trying to get her to meet as many um, leaders in global health as possible. And um, short remarks, but really is an opportunity for her to meet with many of your CEOs and VPs who attend WHA and some government officials. Then Wednesday morning, I'll turn over. Oh, well, good. That's that. it. I want to get that as yeah. yeah. Erin, before you go, can you um, mention what you guys are doing? Yeah, so actually, Sean is on the phone, so he can oh, okay, also great. talk about it. So we are doing a partnership. This is Erin from the AAC. We are doing an event with NTD Child, which will be, in, uh, and some other partners as well, on better medicines for children. It will be on Tuesday morning. And so it unites maternal newborn and child health with non-communicable diseases. Thank you. Appreciate that. You may be excused. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, any PATH or GHTC kind of topic? Um, I've, I've kind of got, I've compiled the list. Um, so PATH will be doing uh, a small breakfast uh, on Monday morning focused on global health security. Um, and we're aiming to do, uh, we're collaborating with UN Foundation on that. Um, we will circulate more details and get it on the calendar as soon as we pin it down. It's not on women, is it? That would be. I can weigh in and <laughs> I can weigh in and see to it that it doesn't. <laughs> it will include women, but no, no of course. Um, then uh, PATH is hosting an event on NCDs uh, also on Monday morning. We couldn't quite prevent that from happening um, in collaboration with Novo Nordisk, and it's uh, framed as a debate from the country perspective on the barriers to access to NCD technologies. Um, then PATH and GHTC in collaboration with GHC, MMV, TB Alliance, CoRED, and a number of other partners uh, are supporting an internal formal Palais event um, on R&D and country experiences in supporting R&D uh, in pursuit of the SDGs writ broadly. Um, and then kind of a side event outside the Palais aimed at a broader advocacy community um, from on Wednesday from 12 to 2, uh, titled Investing in R&D from AMR to Zika, Laying the Foundation for Sustainable Development. Then we're also, PATH is also targeting a formal side event on immunization and GVAP. Mm -hmm. Um, in collaboration with Save the Children, Results, and a number of other partners I don't have right in front of me, and there may be one or two more in the hopper that we haven't put titles to yet. Okay. So, Jenny, did I? You covered it. Yeah, okay. we'll be sending, we're working on invites and save the date okay. currently. So, right. thank you. Yeah. And and we promise we will give you the details yeah. for the calendar. Can we trust you? Thank you. You guys are good at that. Excellent. What are we seeing online? Um, sure. So I think there's a lot of things that have come through. I know some have already kind of been repeated. Um, I was actually going to see if Rupa wanted to, she wanted to share something over the phone. Mm -hmm. So I was going to let her yep. do that. Um, so Rupa, if you want to try talking, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Um, uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can now. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. This is Rupa uh, from Women in Global Health. Uh, just wanted to uh, put on everyone's radar. We will be um, trying, we're actually looking for a host um, to organize a site event potentially on Wednesday afternoon, which brings attention to the gender equality priorities of the DG. Uh, we launched a call to action in the Lancet uh, around the WHO executive board time and um, would like to just have a very focused um, conversation with bringing the perspectives of possibly the international gender champions who are ambassadors as well as um, other uh, member states and NGOs and um, sort of private sector perspectives on how the WHO could, can take more leadership on um, gender equality and global health. And so we're still waiting to confirm the host, but it's most likely going to be the Graduate Institute on that Wednesday, um, probably lunchtime. 
So that's the only uh, confirmed event that we have. But if there's an opportunity to link up with um, the DG priorities and put a gender lens um, or bring uh, more visibility to the global health security uh, event um, that Crystal, you mentioned about from the, for MSH, we would be happy to sort of bring more visibility to those two events too. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Rupa. I appreciate that. How are the other um, folks clustered, Liz, uh, in terms of, since we can't see that here, sorry about that. Uh, no, it's fine. Um, I was actually going to let a few other people maybe share. That's great. Right. Yes, please do. Mm -hmm. I, um, I think we also have Laura Homke from IntraHealth mm -hmm. is on the line. Um, so I don't know if Laura, if you wanted to talk, you're unmuted now. Um, sure. Hi, this is Laura. You can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you just fine. So I just added a... Um, three side events in which we're involved. Um, one is the G4 Alliance, which is what I think most of you know and many of you are members of that alliance, which is the Alliance um, for Safe Surgery, tra Traumatology, um, and Obstetrics, and Anesthesia, I forgot the fourth, um, having a side event on Monday evening. Um, invitations will be going out soon. Um, Safeguarding Health and Conflict is having an official side event or part of an official side event at the Palais on Monday. And then the third one that I just added is IntraHealth is one of the co-sponsors of WHO's official launch of the Global Health Workforce Network, and that is scheduled for Thursday evening. Okay. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then we also have Nicole Fathers from UN Foundation who also wants to share her opinion. Uh, let me just get her on. Okay, Nicole, you can go. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, great. Um, sorry, I wasn't able to join in person. Uh, so the UN Foundation is, um, again, co-hosting our annual Introduction to the World Health Assembly briefing along with the Graduate Institute. Um, at the Graduate Institute on the Sunday before the assembly. That'll be from 3 to 6 p.m. Um, and that'll kind of give a broad overview. It's open to all delegates and all participants of the assembly. It'll give a broad overview, overview of the key topics that'll be discussed, um, some of the procedures of um, the assembly and the director general election, um, and so on. We'll bring a lot of experts from WHO to, to talk about these topics. Um, and we're also partnering with WHO again on the uh, World Health Plus Social Good, which is three days of live broadcast um, video that we'll be filming, again with mostly WHO experts and also um, in-country professionals and um, hopefully some, some ministers. Uh, that will be filmed in the Palais, but it will be uh, live cast online um, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of the Assembly. Um, and so we would love uh, partners' support in, in promoting um, that broadcast uh, during, during the week. Um, and then we're also going to be working with Grand Challenges Canada on the Every Woman, Every Child Innovation Marketplace Private Sector Dinner, which will take place Wednesday evening um, from 7.30 to 9 p.m. That event will be invitation only, but invitations should be going out um, within the next couple of weeks. And again, um, talking with PATH about the Global Health Security uh, event that we will be co-hosting and then some other events sort of um, in development for them. Great. Thanks, Nicole. Um, and I know, I think Tina also wanted to share uh, a few Raven Martin events as well. So Tina, you're unmuted. Hi, thanks everyone. Um, this is Tina Flores from Raven Martin. As Crystal said, we are co-hosting an event on women and health security with MSH, USP, and the Global Health Council on Monday afternoon. But the Global Health Security Agenda Private Sector Roundtable and the Harvard Global Health Institute are also hosting an event on a discussion on what the private sector can do to support, the private sector and other partners can do to support health security um, on Monday morning from 8 to 10 at the Intercon. And invitations have gone out to that, for that already. Great, 
There is also rumored to be an, another um, NCD event that may be hosted by uh, a few companies either Wednesday or Thursday. I'll share information as it becomes available. Great, great. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. Great. So um, just to go back to the polls, mm -hmm. um, it looked like uh, most events were kind of centered around global health security and uh, maternal and child health. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are a bunch in kind of the other bucket mm -hmm. as well. Um, and then as, far, uh, as for days of the week, it looked like most events were being um, planned either Monday or Wednesday, so mm -hmm. kind of the first part of the week. Okay. Um, not everyone voted, so that was just sure. a small sampling. Yeah, of the 33% maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there were also a few other questions that came in. One just regarding the um, original agenda, which we yeah. have on our website. It's also available through um, the link that was at the beginning of the slideshow. Yeah. Um, I will be sending out um, a recording of this session as well as the slides. Um, so you will have access to that link. So you can um, um, access the original agenda. You can also just research World Health Assembly or the mm -hmm. Seventh World Health Assembly, and it should be like the first link. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all available online. Um, and then as far as uh, invitations to all of these great events that we're hearing about, um, GHC will do its best job to compile, compile all the invitations for events that are public and open. Um, and we will be posting them to our special events calendar online. Um, closer to WHA, we'll also have a special um, events update newsletter that will go out listing um, a good chunk of those events too. Um, so that's kind of how we'll be spreading uh, information. So this is Danielle with GHC. And just to add to the calendar, because this question comes up every time, is that that calendar is updated as we get events. So if you don't see something on there when you first look, be sure to keep checking. And send the things that are there that yes. you think should be. <laughs> Great. And then just a few more events. Uh, just really from Medtronic is that they're having, uh, they're hosting a breakfast with IBF on Tuesday morning. Um, and then we also had um, ISPA, uh, the International Federation of um, Associations, uh, sorry, uh, they want to mention that we're organizing a, a, a side event on um, NCDs uh, with reference to the 2018 revision, um, and that event is set for uh, May 24th okay, at right. IRC Museum. Okay. Um, and like I said, as we get the information, we will be sending it and sharing it out. Okay, great. Well, thanks everyone for um, contributing to that part of the discussion. I think, um, you know, we've definitely been taking notes, and so we'll try to get that information back out to you, and hopefully it was helpful for everyone to hear at a higher level kind of what folks are working on, how they're focusing their efforts. The slide we have up uh, now, before they get to advance, is, uh, is just a, a snapshot of what GHG is co-hosting. Uh, and so um, these were all people spoke to each of these. Um, uh, already, but just wanted to provide this um, this snapshot for you uh, in terms of like GHG specific events. And so Rupa mentioned the Women's Dinner, that's invite only. Um, uh, Crystal, uh, Tina, and others talked about the DG session as well as that on global health security. The one um, on Wednesday that we haven't talked about um, uh, is this idea of uh, coming back to what we discussed earlier on the call is this idea of how we come together as a community to talk about the future direction of global health given the, the shifting funding landscape. So that's the premise behind that discussion. Um, and um, we definitely will be looking to invite uh, CEOs or VPs for kind of a high-level closed-door discussion. Um, and it just might be a brainstorming of proposals and how we respond. Or um, you know, there might be um, some other um, provocative pr proposals put on the table or some debate even uh, with regards to kind of where we go from here. But but we at the Global Health Council really felt that it's essential that we come together on this uh, and uh, we want to have these conversations, you know, wh wherever we're all gathered, frankly. And, and Geneva and WHA presents an opportunity to do so with some of our partners in other countries, um, which is a bit unique. We can have this conversation here in Washington, but hearing from others kind of what they're feeling and how they um, 
would respond themselves to a retraction of U.S. leadership and resources could be helpful for us too. So I wanted to put that out there as something that we're planning. Um, we welcome other ideas around it and, and other suggestions for how we approach it. But um, but yeah, as, as Matt said, it's a it's a new era for global health, and I think if we can sort of face it with opportunity and be proactive about how we how we approach it, I, we could be better off. If I can yeah, just Matt. tag on to that. I think it's a new era, kind of in recent memory. Mm -hmm. But sure. one of the things that kind of we, at least I've been trying to do, is go back to what did we do in the mid-90s? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, kind of what's old is new yeah. again. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it sounds like a great event and maybe a place to kind of pick up some of those lessons and dust them off and kind of this is the world we live in again. That's a really good point. Crystal, quick question, um, and you may be getting to this. So you all usually do kind of some sort of welcome reception, you know, about doing that. And then... Um, Two is um, are you going to talk a little bit about like logistics for like the newbies? Yep. That is co coming up. See, I was reading your mind. You might as well reading. be moderating this. <laughs> so I will go ahead and turn it over to Liz, who will talk. First of all, will say anything I missed, which I'm sure there are several things, and um, talk a little bit about next steps, which you know some of that information does include details on our engagement at WHA. Liz, great. Thank you. Um, so just going over some next steps, um, we are sending a delegation to WHA this year. I know a lot of folks on the phone um, might be part of that de delegation or have already registered or are planning to. Um, I also didn't want to keep this section too long because I know there are others that are not going through our delegation. Um, but I do want to um, offer some logistical details. Um, I guess starting kind of a little bit in the middle. Um, so. You should have, if you're a GHC member, an organization or individual member, you should have already received an email uh, with information about how to join our delegation. Um, if you do not need to have credentials to get into the ground of the Calais, then you can also register to become an advocate, which is just to kind of be on our listserv and to receive information, um, and also to receive information about uh, various side events. Um, so there are two different options. Um, if you do need to have a credential, um, that is a separate registration process with an application fee as well. Um, I know there are a number of people that have already registered. Um, if you are an individual GHC member, um, that registration is actually closed because we are full right now. Um, if you still would like to get credentials, um, you can email events at globalhealth.org and we'll put you on a wait list. Um, we might have a few more spots open up. Um, and I hope to get that kind of turned around within the next week or so so that you can also um, complete kind of your planning to get to WHA. Um, as far as organizational GHC members, um, each organizational member is allowed two spots on our delegation, um, and that is still open. So I just ask that you register, you log in through the GHC member portal using your organization's account, um, and you complete uh, one registration if with one to two candidates whoever you're sending. Um, so hopefully all the information is on that link, which again I'll send out this PowerPoint. Um, I tried to provide all the instructions that I could, so hopefully everything is there. Um, but if not, you can always send us um, an email, again, to events at globalhealth.org. Um, as far as our next policy scrum goes, um, we are planning a webinar-only scrum for the end of April. Um, and that's kind of to look at one or two topics um, in a little bit more detail. Um, we'll kind of go through the notes from today's uh, session and decide kind of what everyone was most interested in. Um, and then you should receive more information in the next week or two uh, regarding uh, the agenda for that policy scrum. Um, and then again, we'll have a final uh, policy scrum at the beginning of May where we'll again have an in-person meeting um, and people can kind of talk a little bit more about their events um, and other kind of coordination logistics details. Um, and again, I, I already mentioned this, but our events calendar will be live or it is live uh, right now online. Um, so you're welcome to send us your events or others that you care about. Um, we have a policy that will only post events online um, that we have kind of contact information for the organizer, um, since obviously we're not uh, co-hosting or hosting all these events. Um, so if you could send us as many details as possible, or if it is a save the date, um, we can update that information at a later date. Uh, we just need to know who it's coming from. We don't like to say anything vague on our website because we'll get questions. Um, and then kind of the last point, if you are part of um, the delegation, you can um, submit a statement to WHA. Um, and again, more details are available online for that. 
Um, and I think, Crystal, you mentioned kind of more the, the more logistical part. Um, we will have a, uh, a new delegate webinar, which we posted the last two years um, for those attending WHA for the first time. So we still plan on doing the welcome and, yeah. and the maybe listener. some daily briefings. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah, yes, sir. Yep, things like that. So keep recording. This is a really quick question. What kind of timeline, obviously it's not finalized yet, but what timeline are you thinking about for statement submissions, just given that documents are notoriously late? And <laughs> right. <laughs> That's that it. Therein lies the problem. Right. I mean, as soon as I, I understand, it is kind of tricky to point that um, I mean I'll be available on site at WHA but um, uh, we have to get them the statement at least I think a day in advance I think that's mm -hmm. how it works yep. or so the timing on the agenda because um, they need to post it online and then be able to have it available for others to access I mean to the extent it's possible knowing the documents yeah. sometimes are just yep. released after they bang the gavel you know we'd love to get them before yep. the week of WHA and then that way you know, we're a small team. We want to sort of serve you well and and, and make sure um, all of the statements get in in sort of good condition yeah. and, and, and on time. But um, but yeah, we definitely understand that it's not all on you to <laughs> give this to us. So ideally, before yes. before the twenty second, <laughs> we're I, I think we're you totally totally there with you on that. I would love yeah. to have everything wrapped up before exactly. we get on the plane. Right, but. They have, they have other plans for us, don't they? We'll be in touch. Right. <laughs> All right, well, hopefully we answered questions on this last slide. I don't know if we have any more online. But I think we'll advance the, to the next slide. And uh, thank everybody for <laughs> thank everybody for coming. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this is helpful. Open to feedback on um, how you think this went uh, as a test case uh, in terms of a different way to approach the Scrum. Um, but I want to thank Liz, too, for, for setting this up and managing the logistics and, and pulling together the content. Uh, really grateful, too, for everybody who expressed interest in this and in WHA. And again, I think it's important. It's a very important time for civil society to be engaged. Um, so let's keep at it. And we will talk again in another couple of weeks, okay? Thank you. Thank you.